All right, so welcome back into the metaverse today. We're going to be diving into top 10 Solana games to watch, and we'll dive in deep on each one of these, give you guys some sentiment analysis, and really kind of break down some of these games and what they might mean. Uh, my name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Metaverse Insider. Joining me today, of course, is Mirko Dolger, who is from Unix Gaming, our partner right here on our set, which we're filming now uh, in the new studio. Mirko, great to have you back in. Yeah, thank you, Paul. It's always a pleasure, especially the new studio looks sharp. I like it. I like it. We'll go to the wide shot so you guys get a chance to see everything. <laughs> and really, the fun part of this is, uh, as you guys know, we have both the Tech Pack show, the Tech Path show, and now Metaverse Insider, which is really focused. All of that's on the, the same channel. No difference. You'll continue to see just different uh, focuses as we get into Metaverse uh, gaming, a lot more into the NFT side of things uh, for sure. And Mirko is going to be our on-camera guest and, and uh, analyst around this. Sometimes you guys see our, um, our TA analyst, Evan Aldo, who's over on the Tech Path show, uh, but Mirko is kind of our Evan Aldo for Metaverse and Gaming. Um, Mirko, I want to jump into Solana Gaming because Solana has been moving quickly uh, and, and I say not just Solana, but the, the developers around the Solana ecosystem moving very quickly in terms of the number of projects that are really rolling out there. And I wanted to just uh, mention a couple of these. I wanted to jump to Fractal real quick here to show our audience. Because if you notice over here on the right-hand side, they've done something that is kind of interesting on the trending side. So you've got a lot of different projects here that are holding up in here. And these things move around so much, but uh, these are the, the current trending. We've pulled out a list that we're gonna review today that really breaks down into uh, some of these projects a little bit deeper and, and wanted to get your opinion on them. The first one I wanted to jump to is the Cyberpunk Metaverse, which of course is Yakushima. Have you had a chance to look at what they're doing with this project, Marco? Yeah, I watched the, the whole trailers or all the trailers they had because for me, the most important as a gamer is, you know, the in-game footage, what you see here now also on the right. screen. And it's basically, it's like in, in his apartment and he can dress up uh, what you see in the trailers and yeah, and then this futuristic motorbike. So it's, it's pretty cool what they're building. The graphic is Unreal Engine and yeah, and it's definitely... Uh, 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 one exciting metaverse, uh, piece of metaverse. Yeah, I like, okay, so with uh, Yaku uh, Corporation, who can, is behind this particular project with Yakushima, um, one thing that is, I think, interesting and also needed with most of these projects is that they are verified projects. We have Docs teams behind this, which is another big thing. They also have a team size of, I think, like 15 people. Um, they are using obviously Unreal Engine in this. I was looking at some of their Twitter. I wanted to go jump over to their Twitter because this is kind of interesting right here. Now an Unreal 5 uh, beta stable version just released. Uh, they're doing, uh, doing ray tracing technology. I'm just kind of curious. When you're, when you're out talking with game developers and uh, Mirko, you guys get to onboard a lot of different games and obviously gamers within Unix what is it that you're looking from a team like this? Are you looking for these kinds of advancement, advanced development skills? Or are you looking for more from a game aspect? How does it play? All those kind of things. What do you guys look for? I, I would different in two parts because if if they if you claim that you want to deliver like high end graphics, so then you need to have the high end graphics team behind. If you let's say and not to to lower the quality of X Infinity, but X Infinity is a, a simple a game from the design wise you know there is it's, it's right. 2d there is no not these fancy 3d effects and all that stuff so and all that needs additional manpower on the team um but uh, yeah also and unreal engines uh, is becomes also more easy to adjust to the to the projects and what you see here mm -hmm. i mean i'm not thinking that they they're claiming uh, to to make a triple a um, like a super f where, where people battle and the whole world explode and all that stuff. No, I think they, they just want to build a nice uh, a metaverse where you basically either race or participate in social hubs, something like that. And I think they've, yeah, here on the video, you can see it's, it's basically, it's, 
um, having your avatar and uh, also sooner you will see that you can dress them up. And I think that's the, the main feature here in designing your apartment um, as well. And yeah, the team is super important what we're looking at and uh, we asking the technical questions and we can, if we get the, uh, the confidence that they know what they're talking about, that's of course right. a big plus. And then we, we definitely agree and then we, we see that there is, you know, and yeah and some are super passionate it's like myself as a gamer and then you have like actually you just want to talk about the game and you talk like two hours about gaming and what's possible and not and the future is here stuff like that and no but yeah um definitely team team is super important backing as well um this is like two criteria and um yeah and then tokenomics but this is like i would say always the three key elements what we're looking at yeah mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to get into Synergy Land. Uh, that was our number two uh, project. Let me just jump over to Synergy Land, their website, of course. Lots of, you know, they've had a ton of people doing some interesting things around it. The team's pretty pretty well uh, vetted out here. So I, I like this one. Are you, What are your thoughts on Synergy Land? Do you like this concept? Uh, Synergy Land is an RPG, and um, if you know from let's like, traditional gaming, usually RPGs are the um, most played titles. So we have uh, either you have uh, uh, like characters like League of Legends. Okay, it's a MOBA, but let's say Diablo, um, Titan Quest, Path of Exile. Um, there is so many uh, uh, titles and RPGs. If you see now Elden Ring or Dark Souls, that's been always the titles you want to play. And yeah, this is now a cinematic trailer of Synergy Land. But um, here it's now after the, the trailer. See, this is like beautiful. Yeah? Like walking through these nice worlds, also uh, well-designed with the latest technology. And then really first time you you not only waste or or, or exchange money uh, time for for fun you also been able maybe to to uh, uh, yeah find some rare nfts along the way so yeah super excited about about synergy land yeah and i think as we see a lot especially on solana you know because that's going to be i think the gateway for real well done, you know, in-game NFT assets, digital assets, as we start to see some of these kind of move out. I was looking at their white paper. They had a lot of, uh, not only the team itself, but also just from the background of the team itself, I thought was pretty in intriguing. That's something that we do look at, you know, when we are looking at some of these games. But again, do you think that in some cases, do you feel like the game construct, even though you may have just a star team the game construct, the uh, the whole economy of the game itself, the the function in which NFTs are really conveyed. Do you feel not like that is not the most important thing for a game to be successful? I mean, now we have also the the um, economy factor or the, the token factor. Uh, what we need to consider. So, I mean, you can be the best with game design. But mm -hmm. now you also need to have, beside the fun, a running economy. You know, it's right. like, so basically you need to get people from finance in that you can create your game. Before it was mm -hmm. like, yes, just you were concentrating about design, artwork, uh, um, level design, uh, quests and all that stuff. And now it's a little bit more, let's say, complex. But Solana is a, a very interesting blockchain for that because Solana is really like actually incubating games so if you want yep. to if you're a game they basically offer you of course building on solana what makes a, 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 a gameplay way more smooth because it's fast and cheap um, but also the incubating and they're helping you really to get into the blockchain and that that's really a good support and solana is very very active that's why so many games are choosing solana and solana have an also a very growing nft space so yeah also then in-game assets can be easily transported on the marketplace and in addition and because we talked before about uh, decentralized and going into uh, uh, the blockchain uh, and now, because with Solana, you can basically build on-chain, you know, because like there's mm -hmm. two two factors, off-chain and on-chain. But uh, Solana, super blockchain, fast, cheap, safe, 
and they supporting all these new projects. So yeah, super excited. Yeah, they've got uh, PC mobile on this game uh, as well. Um, I was looking at the first trailer here on the. You know, I, I do follow a lot of the these games. We kind of keep a roster of hundreds and hundreds of these from an aspect for our Crypto Power Index ranking, which I'll show you guys here in a second. We'll take a look at these 10, re-rank them according to sentiment, because they actually fall out differently than what Fractal had them in terms of trending. But back to your point, there's a lot there. Um, and I want to get into some of these others, because you've got Panzer Dogs coming in, uh, small team size, multiplayer, uh, but it is, it's playable now within it. Have you had a chance to look at Panzer Dogs? I rarely looked at it. It's very new. It's trending. That's why we have it in our list today. Yep. But I think it's it's super super uh, um, easy to play. That's why usually like uh, most games they rank with what you showed before on Fractal, and it's uh, it's the user right. It's the user yeah. adoption, yeah. and um, it looks easy to play. What we see here, and I think if it's it's when it's fun, then yeah. Perfect, perfect combination. Yeah, I like, I like when, uh, I'm just kind of curious when you look at uh, not only the ranking, like what Fractal, what, what we see from time to time is the trending aspect because there's so many movement uh, within the trending list, whether you look at Play to Earn or Fractal or some of the others out there that do look at the ongoing market of what's happening. What we look at is more of the sentiment, which is, more not only game players themselves but if it is a token or an investment uh potential then we get a lot more of that traction you know from crypto twitter and many other places that kind of helps us uh, identify the real winners which i think is the one thing you have to watch when any time that you're investing in a lot of these projects like this or maybe you're looking at investing in these or or just playing them you know and investing time in them uh, you do need to pay attention to kind of what the broader marketplace, I think, is going to bring. Let's go to number their number four at the time, which was Portals. And what are your thoughts on this one? This is one that you actually, you and I talked a little bit about. A lot more in-depth here. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about this project? Yeah, I think Portal is, um, and uh, comparing it with The Sims, it was a huge success. It was basically a game where you can build your apartment or house uh you you have you know like a, a certain inventory to to decorate your house and there is also a large metaverse outside of the house where you can basically um uh, go outside meet people so it's really a social game uh, um and it's like i think people if you if if this is all uh, as what they planning to uh, connecting with nfts is basically you're building the apartment not only digital so basically all these inventory items what you put in your apartment is uh, it's basically real inventory you know and then yeah. you can uh, decorate that and and i think having having these new spaces for yourself it's i think you will see uh, that more and more is coming in that direction yeah yeah i was looking at their their run list of just things they've done so they were number uh, second place in Solana's Ignition Hackathon, sold out Portal's access uh, NFT cards uh, in four seconds. So that that's yeah. interesting. Where do you think we're seeing most of? Because I'm hearing more and more of these kinds of of phenomenons, almost blockchain lore of these unbelievable successful launches. Do you think most of the traffic is coming from? new gamers getting into the space that are exploring new games like this or do you feel like this is the the blockchain wizards that are out there that are playing a variety of different leading games that are constantly looking for additional uh investment classes much like in the vb space because there's a lot of vb people out there that really do you know engage heavily in the collectible side of things do you think that's starting to develop a little bit of a pop culture uh within blockchain gaming I think um, the the collectors of especially these pieces, it's more like the NFT community, and uh, there you have a very strong community. So uh, on the token aspect of from the cryptocurrencies, yes, there is also very strong communities. Um, but I think NFT, they, this is like 
or already they adjusted the the new mindset i would say you know like seeing nfts as a status and owning property is a di digital right. and maybe showing off with you know like i mean in a, in a positive way you know like uh, sure and and if if they sold out in four seconds that means that people really like the idea what they're building and people right, couldn't right. wait anymore and um you will see projects they're not sold out and it's more maybe about the what they what they wanna what they wanna build so i think yeah. that the true fans are here nft adapters yeah <laughs> All right, so other mentions that we want to hit on is, of course, uh, Monkey League, formerly Monkey Ball. Uh, that, of course, is, is and we've had it on the show before. Uh, also Star Atlas, which we've had Star Atlas actually on the show before. Uh, Soul Chicks, uh, Chill Cat, and then Decimated and Cryo War kind of round out the top 10. And we're going to show you guys, uh, just in general, our overall ranking on this. But I'm kind of curious, out of those, when you look at the 10 ranked by sentiment uh and we'll show you the chart here uh Mirko. it's not necessarily based on what uh fractal is doing on the trending games which is usually some different parameters we look at overall social interaction that's occurring still star atlas kind of leads the case but you have cryo war decimated monkey league uh and also even soul chicks to a certain extent still getting a lot of popularity out there on social what are your thoughts on one of these talk to me a little bit about cryo war because i know you're a big fan of this one mm -hmm. uh, cryo war is uh for me because the the first thing it's a it's a battle game uh in an arena and then uh the tokenomics there basically uh we see similar tokenomics like uh, uh engines of fury so basically you you betting on your opponent opponent and um you can basically win what you uh, um choose to lose basically uh, um and what the, and then you can double up on your battle you you have and, and the the graphics they're just insane it looks a little bit um from the from the design like like a league of legends or dota and to name right. them they're one of the most successful games out there um and cry war is just it, it and important for me is always are these games a mobile uh, uh, available because you're yep. looking at a large, large user base uh, uh, on on mobile, and it, it's more easy adaptable on mobile. Uh, considering all the developing countries, let's say Philippines, Indonesia, what is super hyped in in the play to earn space, but also South uh, uh, America, Africa, and uh, uh, for me, the trailer looks so much fun. That's why I think. Uh, bringing one addictive game would have all this, yeah, the, the right token economics and game features. Then, yeah, I think that's the uh, that's why I'm I love I love Cry War. I was trying to pull up their their trailer here because this is the one one of them that they have, and I was looking at some of the graphics that you were uh, mentioning. Um, in general, I mean, you're right. The battle games. Uh, this is a, a really killer component i like the fact that they're using real gameplay too for one of the trailers but interesting when you know Mirko, when you're looking at teams that are designing these kinds of games uh is this something because we see more and more unreal engine being utilized but also in general what are your thoughts on uh i like there you go there that's the kind of the mobile aspect of it right there so hmm, yeah. interesting with with that being the case do you feel that mobile has to be the only route to go with uh, with kind of how this is going in terms of development, especially around util utilization of, say, Unreal Engine. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think you have to have a mobile-ready game to do this? Um, I think mobile is, is definitely, should be, in, in the current state of play and earn, should be the, the goal, um, mm -hmm. because a AAA title, what is 4K rendering, what needs a heavy PC uh, uh, computing power, I think we are not there. That people like having, first of all, a, a very expensive might be a, a computer or graphic card to play yeah. a play to earn game because might be the entry level is already uh, cost something. Um, and mobile, I mean, with the evolution of 
the mobile phone and what what phones can actually all like uh, they're so strong uh, from from uh, CPU GPU. Um, sure. And there is um, more games like uh, for comparing PUBG was on computer or PC and went on mobile as well. Battlefield is was from the computer went to mobile. Diablo yeah. three was on a PC and went to mobile. So you see that it's they're coming actually once the, the and the phone's been ready before mm -hmm. they they had only computer because the phone's not been ready. So it's the I think uh, um, long term. Uh, who knows where the phones goes? Yeah, maybe they can fly. I don't know. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's it's just a matter matter of of time, you know. But yeah, definitely sure. mobile should be aimed for heavily now. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're and and I see more and more of that happening, which I like the fact that we'll see more, especially if it's browser based. We get when you get into browser based and mobile, it's kind of the holy grail of what I think will happen, especially because of the aspect that you're reaching, you know, a lot of places around the world that may not necessarily have, you know, heavy ability to have, you know, high bandwidth access all the time, mobile networks in some cases 4G, maybe 5G at, at most, uh, are still going to be limiting on how this grows. And I think this was something that uh, even Zuckerberg was talking about in an interview with um, Lex Friedman. And he was talking about that the real limitations of what we will see in metaverse and gaming in the future are going to be the mobile networks themselves because people will be so mobile out there in the aspect of needing to utilize and, and access many of these games out there. So it's going to be interesting to, to see these guys roll out. Just as a reminder, I just, I'll jump back to the, um, our Crypto Power Index ranking on these because this, this wasn't necessarily ranking top 10 of the ones. These were of the 10 trending projects that we looked at from Fractal, uh, but S Star Atlas came in at 7561. Uh, your number two was decimated at 7316, then 7312 uh, for Monkey League, 7307 for Soul Chicks, and then we had 7197 and 7145 with Cryo War and Portals kind of coming in um, uh, neck and neck there. So interesting stuff. And again, when we look at our data for the Crypto Power Index, we're analyzing a variety of different social media platforms, and then we're comparing them against, against sentiment and amplification data. This is typically going to be something that will help you either in understanding whether or not it's a good investment or it's something you should look at, at least do your research and kind of uh, take a look at whether or not you should jump into it for investment. Hey, Merkel, next week we're going to be talking a lot around Battle Royale, so I can't wait to get into that episode with you next week. I know you have a lot that you're bringing into the show next week, so we're, we're looking forward to that one for sure. But thanks for stopping in. We appreciate it. Yeah, it was a pleasure, Paul. See you next week in the Battle Royale. All right, Royale. my man. I like it. All right, so you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now for Metaverse Insider. That's great. We love that. But the number one place you're going to catch all of this great footage, a lot of our analytics, things of that nature, and of course, our, just our breakdown of what we're doing here on Metaverse Insider is right here on YouTube. Just search Paul Barron Network. You'll find all of our shows, Tech Path Crypto, obviously this show, the new show, Metaverse Insider, uh, where we bring uh, Unix Gaming on to as our analyst uh, and really kind of dive in deep on these things in a bigger way. So hopefully this is helpful to you. We'd love to get your comments and feedback. Make sure and drop them in the comments below. If you want to reach me out on Twitter, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Metaverse Insider.